All right, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in with us tonight. Starting our broadcast a few minutes early to get a little pregame in with y'all. Um, tonight, I got a special guest with me tonight. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> this is Brandon Holloway. <laughs> and you've got Andy Art. And uh, with me tonight, it's, of course, me, Emma Pittman. You know, you dealt with me for four years now. And uh, we got James Burrell with us tonight. And as always, Carnacio down on the sidelines with us. Excuse me, Carnacio Dixon. I almost forgot his last name there for a second. Thank you all again for tuning in. We appreciate it. And we are live here in Harrelson County tonight. What you got for us, Andy? Well, Emma, tonight we've got win or go home. Both teams can make the playoffs if you win. And uh, it should be a pretty competitive ball game. I feel pretty good about uh, Brandon. If we are if we can get on them a little early and get up uh, in the first half, I think we'll be all right. I don't want to get in a dog fight at somebody else's place late the ball game. No, definitely not. We need to, we need to come out strong, uh, put some touchdowns on the board, and get ahead and take care of business in the first half. So Eddie O'Neill wasn't able to come tonight, and Kevin Painter wasn't able to come tonight, so Brandon Holloway is filling in. Those two guys, I think, are meeting with Kirby Smart, uh, see if they can help Kirby figure out how to beat Missouri tomorrow. So, like I said, this game's important. Uh, we've got to win to make the playoffs. If we make the playoffs, we'll be a fourth seed. And best I can tell, Brandon, who, who will we be playing if we win? Looks like if we win, Andy, we will go to North Cobb Christian next Friday night. North Cobb Christian, they're, uh, what are they in, five or six region? I'm not sure which one they're in, but they're in the region with South Atlanta. And, uh, Terrell and those guys. Yes, sir. Um, so they'll be a pretty good football team if we can make it that far. So I think our region stacks up. Rockmart, of course, is number one. Uh, you've got North Murray, number two, model number three, and either us or Harrelson's at number four. I don't know if North Murray and model can flip, can they? I don't think so. It goes ahead to head. So while we're talking about it, uh, tonight, uh, if you're tuning in on YouTube, we are also on ETC Channel 14. And uh, so, Brandon, what, what, let's talk about other teams in the area. Um, Gilmer County play tonight or are they finished? No, they play uh, Wesleyan tonight. That'd be a tough ball game. Are they home no, or away? No, no, I'm, I'm wrong about that. Pickens County plays Wesleyan tonight. Gilmer County plays White County. Somebody told me Pickens County can still make the playoffs. Yeah, I believe that's true. I talked to their AD yesterday, and they're winning and get in. They're like us. So uh, it's one of those crazy deals. If they win and Gilmer wins, that, that's going to flip the seating pretty substantially in that region. So uh, who, they're playing White County? They're playing White. Gilmer plays White County tonight. That should be a pretty pretty good football game. You know, Pickens County beat White County last Friday night by two. Which was so, a surprise. That was that was what I would call an upset. Well, I, yeah, I would think so. I mean, they took Lumpkin County, uh, which is a you know, uh, they're a they're a pretty well ranked AAA football team this year, and they took them to what four or five overtimes. They right. Deep, deep. That was one of your bigger games of the year, and I would assume Lumpkin County has secured their first ever region title. I believe that is correct. So I would say all of. Delonica is excited about that, and that's probably all they talk about. I would think so. That, that's a big deal. We've been there. We understand what winning region championships feels like. It's a, it's a nice feeling. This is a, this is the first time, uh, maybe since Coach Cheatham's second year, that he's been in a position to where it's, it's, it's win to get in. He's, uh, we've been very fortunate the last few years and uh, secured those playoff spots early. But hey, look, we're, uh, we're just a few points from playing at home next Friday night. That's just the bottom line, but we'll uh, 
we're still a young football team. I, I know we start a lot of juniors, but in the grand scheme of things, like we saw here at Harrison County tonight, I don't know how many seniors they have. But it was About a, 15. Yeah, see, yeah. that's a that's a that's a lot of seniors, and and for us, we we're really going to play one senior tonight. A couple of other seniors that were that were playing got hurt, and and uh, we're 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 playing a lot of juniors, a lot of sophomores, and and sprinkling in some freshmen. And so by definition, that's a young football team. Yeah, exactly right. Uh, you know, the other big news this week is the reclassification came out. And uh, Emma, we moved down from double A to single A A. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. My freshman year, four years ago, we were triple A. That's correct. And now we're all the way down to single A. That's correct. That's correct, and I don't necessarily know. We we have we have actually gained in students, but apparently the other schools above us are gaining uh, at a faster rate Subs than we are. Yeah, yeah. I think our our numbers are would be within a few dozen of what our of what our last student FTE count was. I don't I don't know that number exact, but we're pretty daggum close to that as well. And it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. They're talking about several different things, Emma. One of the things they did is eliminate 7A. And they took those schools and pushed them down into 6A, creating a, I think there was, what, Brandon, 59, 60 teams. That's right. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, so what they're talking about changing up the playoffs for single A, B, single A, A, double a and triple a but leaving the playoffs the same for four five and six now i don't know if that's going to happen but they've talked about using a computer ranking to rank the single a double a and triple a schools and not having as many teams where you usually have eight regions and four teams from each region right which is 32 teams, they're talking about cutting it down to 24 to 29. And then ranking them one through 24. And then I'm just assuming, Brandon, I, I don't really know. They're talking about doing this in basketball, baseball. There's yeah. several ports they're doing this in. So uh, we, you know, let's say the number one team was in Valdosta or Brunswick or Thomasville or something like that, and we were 24, we'd have to load up and go to South Georgia for the first round. Even if you won your region or finished first or second, could possibly happen, correct? Brandon? That's correct. That's the way it's proposed today. So those are, those are that's important. Um, that seems unnecessary. I think, I, so. I feel like this system has worked <laughs> for so long. Why are we changing it now? I don't know the answer to that. Uh, I think a lot of people think just like you do, Emma, that, and, you know, we've had this, some discussion with Pickens County and we've had some discussions with Union and Gilmer, and they really don't understand it either. So, uh, you know, the question is, is why are they doing it? So everybody's got, you know, their theory, but uh, I, I don't know exactly what the uh, – exactly what the situation is i don't know why they would change the smaller schools and not change the larger schools well i think that's pretty self-explanatory <laughs> so uh maybe baby steps for it but i, I guess when we all know that really through ghsa those larger schools gwinnett county uh those larger systems gwinnett cobb th those guys they they run they run the show fulton of course but uh the the positive for me is that we Come playoff time, we're not going to have to contend with private schools, and that's yeah. that's a. That's I, a, I heard that actually. That they were talking about it at school, that the um, they're taking private schools either completely out of regions or however that may work. They are eliminating the need for us to play private schools. But now I thought the private school had a choice. Am I wrong about that? I it, I don't I don't know. I know what I've read. Uh, the minutes I've I've just read the minutes of JHSA executive committee meetings and what I read was that the privates will be with the publics through the regular season so they would be in, in they could we could have a private school in our region but come playoff time uh, single A private through 3A private are going to go have their own playoffs that's interesting there. it is very much so very that, much that so. changes a lot of 
situations. And, and one of the things the private schools, when I was reading about those schools, is they get added points if they play up in class. If they go up to double A, triple A, four A, they get a they get an added points for playing up. Whereas uh, I don't think that's the way it will happen in in uh, the public schools in A, two A, and three A. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. I know what I read. You'll you'll have to be some sort of a mathematician to understand it because it was uh, wins and then. Uh, it was uh, opponents wins and opponents opponents. I mean, it's it pretty complicated the way the way it's proposed today. Um, but but I did hear through the grapevine that, that there's possibly some tweaks coming to that already. I'm sure there's some tweaks. Now I'm sure there's some tweaks. I don't think it's guaranteed we're in single A. It could go up to double A depending on how many schools go up or down. Yeah, I, I don't know. You, you wouldn't think that if a school appeals, they would be able to move us because someone appealed to play down. That that, that doesn't seem no. It doesn't seem right, but it doesn't mean it's not going to happen either. No, because it it got uh, a little strange last time. So our captains are coming to the center of the field. We'll try to pay attention and actually see who wins. Last week was the first game we've had that we didn't receive the opening kickoff this year. That is true. Who are our captains tonight, Andy? Let's see who we got out there. 14. As Cooper Bourne. Four. You've got Taylor. 19. Uh, 19 would be Brody Pascal, isn't it? And 60. 60 is die. So, Braden Taylor, I didn't mean to leave out his name and the first name. I'm just used to the last names and Jacob, Jacob die. Well, we didn't do it again, Brandon. They're going to take the football. Well, I, I don't necessarily disagree with that strategy uh, they guess they're going to try to score on us early just like we've been trying to do folks and get on the board and there's 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 arguments both ways i think the the uh, bill belichick math on that is is the last possession and score the first half and receive the ball the second half there's some some winning percentage some formula there where it's it's hard to get beat if you're able to do that yeah you can't cut cut a ball game on without them talking about metrics and we want to thank Bill Holt Chevrolet for sponsoring the pregame this yes, year. Yes, it was all year. amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we're moving on to the first quarter where we will defend. It'll be Blue Ridge Tire and Auto is our first quarter sponsor. Emma, while we've got a second. Brandon, I want to apologize. We've been calling it Mountain Valley Bank yes. instead of Piedmont Bank. Yes. But... Uh, that is, that is true. We are we are the Piedmont Bank. So our premier sponsors for this year are Kevin Painter Insurance and Piedmont Bank, correct? That is correct. Is it Community Bank or just Bank? No, just the Piedmont just bank. bank. Okay, I got you. Uh, Mercier Orchards, Woodman Live, Trust AMC, Brotherhood Oil, Empty Stockholm Program, Kiwanis, the Blue Ridge, Remax Town & Country, Steve Tucker, ETC Security, Kevin Painter Insurance, Lowry Law, Piedmont Bank, United Community Bank, Fannie County Development Authority, and the Trailer Drive-In. Once again, thank you all, all so much. We truly do appreciate it. Well, I can tell you as a sponsor, we, we certainly appreciate all that you guys do of highlighting our kids and and uh, getting them out there every Friday night. So, Andy, I'm always surprised at the teams that, that will come out first and allow us to come out after them. I know that's a big deal for Coach Cheatham, and I've heard him make a, a – um, uh, he he refuses at home to come out till after the visiting yeah, team. So I, I'm always I'm always surprised by that that teams that'll, that that will do that. I, I agree with you. That's uh, that's just customary. As Ponton will tee it up. Got a couple backs too deep to receive. Let's see, Brandon. He kicks it down to about the 12-yard line. Going to get up to about the 33-yard line. Looks like Cheatham in on the tackle. Braxton Cheatham, number 20. Yeah, Braxton's really came along as the season's progressed. He's one of those sophomores that 
Uh, we weren't seeing a tremendous amount of early in the season, but just keeps he just keeps coming. He does. He he was banged up early. I think he got banged up in track at the end of last year, and it took him a while to get get better. So I do not have. We're going to get in a wing set here. I see another sophomore starting for us out there with Conrad Head. Nice play. I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not great on faces, but Carson Callahan, is he out tonight? He, uh, he may be out tonight. I don't know if he's dressed and, and, uh, and they're ready to go. So uh, Cooper Bourne came in on that tackle. Emma helped me keep up with the numbers out here of who's making tackles. Cooper's had a really good year. So first two runs, Brandon, between the tackles. Yeah, born there again, along with along with a host of them. What type of ball game have we been seeing from them this year based on the footage? Same what you just saw. You just saw John Holson back camp comes in. He'll be probably playing a, a interior lineman or an end. Like I said, who do we have? We've got Conrad Head at one corner. We've got Dockery at the other corner. Right now, we've got a single high safety in Taylor. It is, and I believe I see Callahan with a with a hoodie and sweats on down there. They're going to have a quarterback run. He's going to be well short of first down. I saw him with his knee wrapped up earlier, so I'm not sure what that may imply for us going into the playoffs. Going into the playoffs, ah. You never know. Kids are resilient nowadays. <laughs> so they've got a big fourth down and four. Looks like they may go. He has Noah Burnett in the game now. On our side of the 50. No, nope. oh. quick oh. kick. Nice punt. It's going to take oh. a good bounce for Harrelson County. Yeah, great Harrelson County. And Fannin will scrimmage from the 13. You don't see that a lot right there where the where the quarterback didn't drop at all, so don't protect their center. No. Center's free game right there. I, I'm with you. I thought he was going to kick the center in the back. Yeah, I did too. You get you get the center, you push the center back a little bit, and you might you might uh, push him right into the punt. So who are we going to – big question is, who are we going to play at running back? And we – got an H back in there. Cooper Bourne's at H, but I don't see a running back. We may spread it and throw the ball here. Yeah, we're four wide. We are. Two right, two left. Mm. We're empty. And our quarterback's about eight yards deep. <laughs> Nice run. He's going to pick up a first down, Brandon, right off the bat. And I'm going to go ahead and apologize real quick. We have no way to get our camera on the scoreboard, so we will have to keep you updated on time and I points. can't even see the score. I might see it here in the mirror. Um. Well, I lost out missing for the, uh, I missed out looking for the scoreboard. No gain on the play. Actually about three on the play. He just didn't look like any. <laughs> it, it really didn't. <laughs> Quarterback's gonna run it again. He's got yardage, he's. Flag in the backfield. Oh my. We have a holding. Our players are coming back. I don't even see the flag, Emma. Right there, about the 35. He needs to wash that. <laughs> that blends in pretty good with the turf there. Good, good eyesight. I wear glasses for a reason, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not good, folks. That's going to put us. Depending on where he's got it marked, he's got it marked roughly around the line of scrimmage. So it ought to be second down and about 17. Yeah, so it looks like that the game is actually on ETC3 as well as our YouTube channel. It's not on channel 14 according to 
viewers checking in. Looks like we're about second and 16 here, Andy. Yeah, we got somebody in the backfield. Who we got? Judah, Judah Woods. Wood. Nice run for him. Great, great um, run for Judah. Freshman, sophomore? Judah's a sophomore. Yeah, sophomore. he picked up 10 yards. He got the 10 yards back. I, I really like how patient Judah is running the football. He is. He, he, uh, he picks his holes and picks his way through. Judah's not a, he's not a small kid. No. He's a good no. size. And he, uh, he got slowed down early in the year. He had an injury early in the year. It slowed him down. So we're going to go four wide again. We're going to roll to the right. Now, oh, just knocked it out of his hands at the last minute on the 48-yard line. It's going to bring up a long fourth down, fourth and eight, fourth and nine. Rebel. I'm not sure exactly what happened on there, but it was a nice throw by Sullivan. Well, it's nice threw it, throw. Threw it in a With tight window. 8:04 in the first quarter <laughs> remaining. I think the uh, I think the receiver had to had to try to get his feet down right against the sideline and probably probably hurt him a little bit trying to catch the football. Yeah, I think so too. It was it was just that route. We're going to kick and roll. They're going to catch it on. Oh, fumble, fumble it. We fumble got the, it. Oh, I think we got the football. Recovered at about the 38-yard line. I think we got the football. Fannin has the football. Yes, sir. Nice play. That's the kind of morale booster we want right about now. That is exactly right. Just to capitalize on it now. That's a, that's a huge fourth down play for us to kick the football away. And just to get it right back. Just to get it right back. With further progression down the, well, no, yeah? I'll yeah. tell you, that line drive punt was knuckling right at him. That's a hard, hard play to make for the deep guy, especially with, with 11 guys running straight at you. You take Bam. your eyes off that for a second, you're in trouble. We're gonna have a timeout. Why are we having a timeout? Did we take the timeout? They're, unless they're reversing it, giving them the football. That's exactly. That's exactly what, what they're, they're doing. doing. Why are they reversing it, giving them the football? They put the offense on the field. So we come out of the huddle. We come out of the pile with the football. They point our direction. Now they've got the first down, and they'll get in. Holy cow. I'm not sure what happened there. I'm not sure what happened there either. But I don't like the fact that they were closer to their sideline than they were to ours when they called it. Absolutely not. So they're running a variation of the spread, spread slash wing, double wing. They ran a little, they ran a little sweep from the H back on this side. What do they call it, the wing gun? I don't know what they call it. I've heard it called that before. We're gonna stop them short right there. We are. Gonna bring up a third and two. Baylor Twigs with a big play. Nice play. It's probably, I'm guessing, Brandon, uh, four down territory, I expect them to run it here and run it again. Yeah, you would but, fully expect that here. Yeah, but maybe we get them in the backfield. So we're not having much luck right now. They're gonna, they're gonna take a time out. So I think everybody's a little frazzled right now after that almost turnover. Well, we had a big game, got called back for holding. We recovered the ball on a punt. They gave us the football and then they took it away. So I'm not going to say they were wrong about either one of them. I'm just saying it didn't go our way. So that's how much time we got. Anybody see? 
about six minutes and 10 seconds left in the first quarter. Yep. On this timeout, it looks like uh, that White County is up seven to zero over Gilmer County, and Wesleyan is up seven to zero over Pickens County. Both those should be good football games tonight. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, we wish those guys the best, Pickens and Gilmer. Yeah, Pickens had a, had a pretty good football team, and they uh, they. You know, they have potential to uh, score a lot of points, so they must have done it last week against White County. He's going to run the push, tush, push, and I don't think he got anything. And we, we a got a flag. Start. I think we had a false start there. Well, that'll help us out a little bit. Oh, 100%. I'll tell you, those yellow flags on that dead grass are, are tough to see. Well, they, uh, this crew may need some new flags. So, I don't know if either one of y'all know, but why does their field look like this? Why is it's, uh, it's a grass field, obviously, not a turf field, but. I would assume it's Bermuda grass. Brandon, is that correct? Yeah. And then it usually, when it starts getting cold, it'll, it'll go dry and dormant and lose its color. It'll go dormant. And in the winter rise, the only way to com combat that, and it, and it may just not be, here's the truth, it's very expensive to, to maintain that field for a whole season. I, I would think most grass fields in high school football are the, looking like that tonight. Quarterback with a little roll, roll out, picks up about 15, 16 yards for a first down for Harris, Harrelson. And which, which we forgot to mention earlier, but they are also the Rebels. They are the Rebels. Just like the uniforms, good looking uniforms. 100%. Really, really sharp uniforms. Quarterback take it up the middle. He didn't get a whole lot, maybe a yard, two yards at the most. And I will apologize. We are right by the, I mean, right by the stands. So there will be more than likely chances that somebody's going to walk in front of my camera. Cooper, Cooper Bourne is, is a tackling machine this year. Nice yes. tackle by him. I don't know how many he has, but I would, I would suspect we're, if he hasn't crossed triple digits, he would be nearing triple digits on the year. He'll run the quarterback again. He's going to get up maybe three or four yards, bring up a third down and five, which is where you want him. See Sullivan entering the game. I think this is the first time he's been in on defense. Yeah, he's at corner too. It's a different position for him. Yeah, we're playing one deep high safety. We've got eight in the box, expecting them to run in the box. They're gonna run a little end around. We're gonna drag him down about to 40. They're gonna be short. It's gonna bring up a fourth and three. So what do they do here? What would you do, Emma? Um, well, uh, there's a reason I'm behind the camera, not on that field. <laughs> but <laughs> I would, I would definitely, um, I don't know. Go with run the quarterback, Emma. That's always the answer. <laughs> They're gonna go. run it straight ahead. I don't believe he got it. I don't. I know he didn't get it. This referee over here is marking him where he got it. This Holy cow, also didn't give now us he's moving over. back. He's moving back. I think our coaches are working him a little bit. Guy on the far side says he's short. Should be fanning football for the second time or do we get it taken away? They're gonna measure it. Is that an official's timeout? It is while they measure. While we have a moment, I would like to run down our sponsors really quick. We've got our premier sponsors this year, Kevin Painter Insurance and Piedmont Bank. 
we have our sponsor for the year of Mercier Orchards, Woodman Live Trust at AMC, Brotherhood Oil, Empty Stocking Program. Judging by the screens, I feel like we got it. Fanny County Football. Kiwanis of Blue Ridge, Remax Town and Country, Steve Tucker, ETC Security, Kevin Painter Insurance, Lowry Law, Piedmont Bank, United Community Bank, Fanning County Development Authority, and their trailer drive-in. And of course, our first quarter sponsor, Blue Ridge Tire and Auto. Based on what I saw from here, Andy, that was a lot closer measurement than I thought it should be. I, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think he got past the 40. I think Harrelson got a great spot there. Well, when this official on this side, he marked it, he marked it past the first down line. Nice he run. Another holding. Another hold, and he's going to call that. Is that 50 or 60? That's that, 50. That is 50. He's going to call that on our freshman. He is. Another update. Gilmer and White County are now tied. Uh, never mind. No. Uh, yeah, Isaac Watson's done a good job. He stepped in at left tackle when Noah Burnett went out. As a freshman, I mean, you're uh, you're you're a pretty good player, pretty good athlete if you can play as a freshman at the high school level. That's right. And 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 then put him in at tackle on top of that. That's we got five wide, guys. Brandon. We're going trips right, and we're going to bring in motion. Going to run a little tunnel screen. Nice catch. Great catch. I'm looking for flags. There it is. There it is on the 40. Looking for flags, and there it is. Mercy sakes alive. The good news is I think it'll still be a first down. Well, it should be. Spot foul Unless it's a 15 yards. Yeah, if it's holding, I believe they called holding on our receiver right there. So, it gets bad when you can start predicting them, isn't it? I saw Coach Kuna pointing before it was even thrown, I believe. He was right there on top of where it hit. So, we, we held somebody. Let's see what they're going to do. He's going to mark it off. Now, I know some penalties the other team can decline, and why would they do that? That's a um, for the viewers. Well, you, you, in this situation, they really don't have a, we have a, we, uh, they're going to take it, moves us back 10 yards. But you, when you have a penalty, and it drops the down, down. So you get the town. So if it take the penalty, our yeah. down still first or second down. And if they decline it, it goes to the third down. Right. And that's something you would want to do on, say, a fourth down, where instead of giving them that chance to replay fourth, I mean, excuse me, third down, instead of giving them that chance to replay third down, you're going to want them to go ahead and go to fourth. So it certainly appears, Brandon, we're, we're spreading them out and uh, and trying to run, run or throw with them spread out. We go to Two at the top, two at the bottom. We're going to hand the ball. Nope, he's going to keep it. Run up the middle, get six yards. It should be bring up third down and three. Boogeyman Sanders on the top. <laughs> what are the colored signs the other team is holding? I see a, a red and maybe a blue or a purple and a yellow. I don't know. They're calling the defense. I assume the defense or the offensive scheme with those, with those colors. They're trying to tell us whether it's a run or a pass, or telling their guys where it's a run or a pass. We're going to hand it up into Judah Woods. He's not going to get but a yard. It's going to bring up a long fourth and two. I hear Coach Woodall screaming, punt. Big old wall of yep. two jerseys on the top. That's going to bring up four down. We put Noah Burnett in at tied end. So a fourth and two. We can punt, try to pin them deep. We may go. Judah Woods in the backfield. 
We're going to snap and go. Quarterback's going to get a first down. Nice run. Picks up about 15, 16 yards. With 37.5 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Apologies if I'm a little bit off. I am looking in a reflection. And that may take us to the second quarter unless we're going fast here, and we are. Lawson will set them up. Judah Woods in the backfield with him. Lots of time to throw down the middle. Touchdown. Brax Cheatham. Brax Cheatham for the touchdown. Great nice ball. throwing catch. Great ball, great catch. Plenty of time to throw the football, Brandon. He took his time and laid it right in there. For a second there, I thought it was going to be intercepted, but it went right over the hands of the safety, right into the hands of Braxton Cheatham. Threw it right where you need to throw it. Nice play. Fannin takes the lead, 6-0. Pond time will try to make it seven. That's a nice way to end the first quarter. It is a nice way to end the first quarter. How much time's in the first quarter, Emma? Um, 24.6 seconds. So we will kick it off. As a matter of fact, that's a real nice Blue Ridge Tower and Auto first quarter. So we'll kick it off, try to pin them deep. Nice drive, Brandon. We needed that. We did. That was uh, that was an important drive for us, like kind of what we alluded to earlier, and that's not getting in a shootout late in the game. So, I mean, that's certainly not a big lead, but that's a, that's a seven-point lead to take it in the second quarter, and that's, that's what you like. We got to cut back on the penalties, quit committing a few penalties. I know we joke around about the officials and the penalties, but a lot of them I'm sure we're doing. Looks like the fog's trying to roll in a little bit over here. It sure does. Hanging about the top of the bleachers. Nice kick. He'll kick it down here to number three on the 10. He'll fill it off the ground. Oh, he's got a good hole. Who have we got out there? Looks like Holson back and Weaver in on the tackle. Yeah, number 10, Luke Holson back. Number 52 is John, our defensive line. You've got putting Noah Burnett in there along with Case Holloway. We've got Green. Is he also, he's in there. We got Baylor Twiggs in there. Looks like we're in a four-man front. Here. We are in a four-man. We're in a five, six-man front, as right. a matter of fact. Nice play. We're going to come up there and stop him. He got about three yards. Pascal was the first one in there. Nice play. Brody's playing this outside like linebacker slash defensive end. That's the end of the first quarter. And that is the end of the first quarter, the Blue Ridge Tire and Auto. Once again, we appreciate Bill Holt Chevrolet Blue Ridge Tire and Auto. And we're moving to the A.J. Petrillo Remax Town and Country. Second quarter. Second quarter. Brandon, you got us any scores? I've got scores. Looks like uh, Lumpkin County is up 7-0 on West Hall. In the North Carolina playoffs, Murphy and Polk County are tied at 7. Um, the... The first round of the NCISAA, which I have no idea what it means, but Raven Gap is beating someone 55 to six. Uh, and it looks like now Wesleyan is up on Pickens County 14 to nothing. So I don't, I don't know who the poor soul is that had to play Raven Gap tonight, but, but <laughs> we, we know from experience, that's not a great, a, a great draw. Um, um, our premier sponsor for this year, Kevin Painter Interns and Mountain Valley Community Bank. And our Rebel TV sponsor, excuse me, I can't seem to talk there for a second. Our Mercier Orchards, Woodman Life, Trusted EMC, Brotherhood Oil, and G Stockton Program, Kiwanis, the Blue Ridge, Remax Town and Country, Steve Tucker, ETC Security, Kevin Painter Insurance, Lowry Law, Piedmont Bank, United Community Bank, Fannin County Development Authority, and the Trailer Drive. And once again, thank you to all of our sponsors. We could not do it without y'all. Yeah, thanks very much. It allows us to bring the game to you. And as I said before, as a sponsor, we appreciate all that uh, Emma and her crew 
and Bubba's classes do as well as all that Andy Art does. Nice tackle there by Braden Taylor. He's gonna come up and stop him. It's gonna bring up a third down, a little less than five, but it's in between four and five. The, uh, so once again, Brandon, we've done a pretty good job at the line of scrimmage. We're running a six man front, two linebackers, three, three in the uh, secondary. We're switching it up every now and then, but they're going to roll right, throw short, and it's incomplete. Great play by Dockery. Dockery, another kid this year, is getting, getting a lot of playing time for the first time. He played some last year, but we've got a lot of young kids uh, that's, that's playing a lot. Brax Cheatham, another one just came in at the corner. Question is, are they punting or are they going? Yeah, it's hard to tell with this formation. I'm, uh, they're going to punt it. Brack's going to try, going to let it go. They kick it toward the sideline. Don't run into it. I don't think Taylor ever saw it. I don't he? think he did either. <laughs> Thank goodness it didn't bounce toward him. So, I don't know that he ever saw the ball. Uh, Conrad Head's another young kid that we've seen on the field tonight about every play so a little different not seeing Callahan or Sullivan uh, of course Callahan's not even dressed but see, not seeing Sullivan taking a lot of snaps on defense yeah Sullivan's banged up a little I mean I'm sorry Callahan Carson's banged up a little bit maybe we can get him back next week maybe we can't but uh, we're going to rest him this game see if he can get better Fanning continues to spread it out to this side one we do leave an H back in and we're going to give it nice run. We probably picked up, looks like four yards to me. Yeah, nice game by Junior. Long Wood. three, short four. And again, I'm not to not minimize the importance of this game because it's it's either win or go home. But you know, we certainly, if we can find a way to win tonight without Carson and have him healthy for next week, it'll be a big. A big help in a playoff game to have him. Oh yeah, he's so, he's one of my favorite football players. It, there's no quit, none whatsoever. And he's a junior, correct? That's correct. We're gonna throw it out to Weaver. Weaver's gonna get it out of bounds, almost at the first down marker. Let's see where they mark it over there. Looks like we're gonna be about a yard short. Well, he is. You're right, Brandon. He's going to be a yard short. And I know this doesn't apply to Callahan right now, but one of the things you're talking about earlier that you have to watch for is, speaking of track with uh, Braxton, was that you've got to watch for cross four injuries. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. So we're going to run it here with Lawson. He's going to get a first down and more. He's dragging a guy down across the 50. You know, you don't want to injure yourself in your secondary sport to mess up your primary sport. <laughs> well, it's it's usually when you get hurt, it's a freak accident. So that's a first down in the A.J. Petrillo second quarter. Yeah, lost in a, he, there was contact real quick there after the snap. That would have been a, we almost had a horse collar. Nice run by Judah Wood. He breaks in the field, picks up a good 12, 15 yards. Watching, Big play on first down. Absolutely. Watching Lawson break tackles, same thing with Callahan. It's, that's what your weight program does for you. You, you wait, those, Look, those guys are not huge. They're not 200-pound running backs, but they're so strong in their core. We have an amazing weight training program That's at the high absolutely school. correct, and it shows every Friday night. Um, We're going to run a fake. Lawson runs it up in there. He may have lost a yard, two yards, as a matter of fact. The truth is today, is a, as a young athlete, you're either lifting or getting behind. It doesn't matter what sport you play. You're, right, you're lifting or getting behind. That's exactly right. While we got a chance, we've got a state track meet tomorrow. We're actually we got do. cross country over here in Carrollton about probably 15, 20 miles away. We sent them off to the high school. We all stood outside the front and waved at them as they rode off. Good deal. That's, that's great. Yeah, we- Lawson's gonna throw it short and complete. Who caught that? I believe it was Taylor. Nice play. Good completion. Picked up about six yards. 
Bring up third and seven. Yeah, I believe our cross country teams, uh, our boys and girls were, were both region champs, I believe. They were. That's, they that's were. incredible. So, uh, Zach Prater has an opportunity tomorrow, a good opportunity to win the state in cross country. I don't know if we've had anybody do that in cross country. I know we've won some in state, but it would be a big deal for the boys to win, win the uh, cross country title tomorrow. He's going to roll. Lawson's going to roll. He's got a man oh downfield oh. wide open. Wow. Touchdown, Dockery. Nice throw and catch. And a great start to the second quarter. Yes, sir. This is a continuation. Uh, we've scored two possessions in a row. This gives Fannin a lead of 13 0 against Harrelson. Ponton with Weaver Holdens going to see if he can make it 14. Nice drive, nice play. Had some big plays, explosive plays. Nice throw and catch on that play. He had two guys wide open. I don't know what they were doing on defense, but they they were open. So Dockery was wide open. Wide open. You got any scores, Brad? I do. For the region championship, uh, just about 30 minutes up the road, Rock Mart is up on North Murray, uh, 14 to zero at the end of the first quarter. And I can't, as someone who's played both teams, I don't think there's any surprise in this booth about that score. No, uh, Rock Mart's a pretty solid football team. I know they're a young football team, but they had way too much speed for us this year. They've got too much speed for anyone in this region. That's just that's just the facts. Yeah, they uh, they ran uh, the receiver. I you know I don't know that we could cover him in a phone booth this year, but <laughs> he uh, he was a pretty good football player. He is, and that that number 22 is an absolute stud. He uh, he's a he's a big kid too. They had him listed at 225, and I don't know if that'll touch him. It, no. His legs looked like they were 225. <laughs> he was, uh, we saw him in Heard County last year at the state weightlifting championships. Uh, we're going to kick a little pooch kick. They're going to bring it out to the 37-yard line, and that's where the Harrelson County Rebels will scrimmage. But if, I'm, if my memory serves me correctly, he finished second. Uh, to, uh, in that competition, which we competed very, very well in, uh, by the way. But I believe he benched like 365, 375. Oh, wow. His, his power clean was, was not impressive, but his bench was impressive for a, for a sophomore because he's just a junior as well. And I know they don't have squats in that. They do not. What do we got? We got a flag. We got timeout, Fanny. Uh, 817 remaining in the second quarter. We're going to take a time out. Be a good time for Emma to read the sponsors. Always. Our premier sponsors are Kevin Painter Insurance and Piedmont Bank. And our sponsors for the year are Mercier Orchards, Woodman Life, Trust State AMC, Brotherhood Oil and Stockholm Program, Kiwanis, the Blue Ridge, Remax, Down and Country, Steve Tucker, ETC Security, Kevin Painter Insurance, Lowry Law, Piedmont Bank, Knight Community Bank, the Pending County Development Authority, and the trailer driving. And as always, if y'all would like to sponsor us, find somebody. They'll get you in touch with the right, in touch with the right person. I promise you that. Uh, just let us know because we appreciate everything they do. And, of course, thank you to all you two do as well. Thank you. Uh, Pickens has now scored and is only down 14-7 to seven to Wesleyan. So. so while we're talking again, our secondary, you got Conrad Head, you've got – Tucker Dockery at the other corner safety. You've got Braden Taylor, our linebacker, C.J. Reese, another good football player that's played good this year. He's going to run that guy down right there. <laughs> as, you, as you called his name. I called you, his name. I'll tell you, uh, Andy, as I look out there, of the 11 guys on the field at this very moment, 10 of those will be on the field for us next year yeah you know Brody Pascal is the only kid only senior that's not coming back Pascal Pascal is a big kid too he I is didn't really he, he's just grown a lot over the summer and he he's six four he is a big player they're gonna have a good run there he's not gonna get a first but he's gonna get it all the way down 
Yeah, we certainly will miss Brody next year. Absolutely. Going to bring up a third and four. So what did you say they called it? The uh, spread wing? Uh, wing gun. Wing gun. <laughs> Wing gun. I don't know if that's what they call it, but I have heard it called that before. They're going to give it to number two. He's going to pick his way through. Nice run. He's going to take it down into Fannin territory on the 45-yard line. So that's a first down they've had in a little while since their first possession. We're going to run Twigs out of the ball game, put somebody in. They're kind of right in front of us. I can't see the numbers, but you know the players. Nice uh, tackle. Great tackle. Who was that? Number 14 again. He has a lot of tackles. I'd be surprised, Cooper Bourne, if he wasn't in a uh, – uh-oh, Taylor's hurt a little bit. He's out here limping around. He twisted his ankle. C.J. Reese got off, off the bottom of that pile as well. So it's, it's, it's kind of hard to see from here who exactly was in on that. But but uh, we know Bourne and, and C.J., and I'm not sure who else. Yeah, we, we were talking about C.J. C.J. came through the line on the right side, went all the way down, ran down the quarterback over on the far right-hand end. They're going to give it to number two he's going to get maybe five yards going to bring up a third and five the mo for cj reese is this he's going to go as fast as he can and he's going to hit something really hard oh yeah that's the mo for cj reese which is the perfect mo for a linebacker CJ's another kid that we talk about the weight program. He's he's really strong um, for a for a sophomore. So it's exciting to see him continue to develop. Andy, number ten for Harrison County is a big kid as well. Good. You think gracious. they might give him the ball? They're gonna run and stop him. They're gonna stop him two yards short, maybe three yards short. He's going to bring up a big fourth down. What does it look like? Fourth and two? It's about fourth and two. We're going to run die back in the ball game. We're going to run green back in the ball game. Put those two guys on either side of the center. See if we can't push them around. Almost five minutes left in the, in the half. Make sure y'all stay tuned to hear the band. Now the quarterback keeper. Oh, he may have. They're going to give it. This referee says he's got it. Should be a foot up for a Harrelson first down. We hit him behind the, behind the line to gain, and he squirted to the right just a little bit. They got it by about a half a yard, looks to me like. That's all right. They're burning the clock. So they get a new set of downs. They'll scrimmage from the 33-yard line. And we get the ball second half. Excellent comment there, Emma. We need to stop them here, steal one, and get one in the second half, too. They're going to bring number nine in motion, going to roll, look to throw him the ball. And they threw it to the outside, maybe the inside receiver, and he's going to pick up. Let's see where they mark him. He's going to pick up about four or five yards. Yeah. Sure looks like when they throw the ball, it's more than a five-yard gain, doesn't it, Brandon? It, it does. It does. That's probably closer to a four-yard gain, actually, Andy. <laughs> so, folks, we're down in Harrelson County. If you don't know where Harrelson is, we're tucked right in between Buchanan or Buchanan, however you want to call it and Tallapoosa is to the west of us. We are basically in Alabama. <laughs> we are almost. He's going to break a good run, get up the sideline. He's going to score. That's the first outside run we have seen tonight from, from Harrelson County. Yeah, we were not able to contain the end, and he was able to get around the sideline. 
and scoring just like that is 14 to six. They will, looks like they brought their kicker out. They'll see if they can get one point to make it a one score, seven point ball game. Oh, we almost blocked it. And it's through. They got the train horns going, Brandon. I noticed behind the bleachers here, down off in the woods a little ways, a set of train tracks. So, like we were talking about before, we've got the Cos Country meet. I, I think that's a statewide meet. I yes. believe you're correct. I think they've got all the teams from single A to seven A over here tomorrow. The girls have a good chance. We've got two girls that, uh, let's see, 58 needs to back up a little bit. There you go. Uh, Lindsey Holloway is one, she won the region. And, oh man, it just escaped me what the other young girl's name is that runs with her, but she was right in there. They were within a few seconds of each other, almost crossed at the same time. Andy, is, is Lindsey healthy? Yeah, she's, she's uh-oh, nice high punt. He's going to take it. People quit fair catching those, haven't they, Brandon? They have. That used to be a standard fair catch it uh, when they made that kick, but teams have been catching it, bringing it out to the 30 to 40, anywhere between the 30 and the 40-yard line. Yeah, I think Lindsey's healthy. Um, I think she's having having some burr situs issues. Carly Sams is is the other girl's name. Uh, they had a good race at Region, and both of them expecting they're going to try to get on the podium tomorrow. That'd be great. So we're going to go two wide, run a H back, run him back. We're going to hand the ball to Judah Wood. He's going to run it up in there. Linemen are going to try to push him. They've given him about four yards. Long three, short four. With 2.55 and counting down remaining in this half. You're better at reading that backwards than I am, <laughs> Emma. Yeah, this is just what you said, Emma. If we can get a, get a score here, whether a touchdown or a field goal, we'll get the ball to open the second half. Barring an onside kick. Uh, would be big for us. We're going the wrong oh, way. The first field. He's got yards. Don't back. Yeah, he may be gone, wow. folks. One to beat. One to beat. Oh, oh and they run him run. down about the 19-yard line. No flags. No flags. He had to get up to see that one with those yellow flags on this dead grass. I'll tell you, I, uh, I didn't have high hopes for that one when he started to reverse directions. That doesn't work. Most no, of the that time. Was, that was a big time play. And like you said, Brandon, nine out of 10 times, you'll get a block in the back or a holding in that type situation. Lawson's going to run it up the middle and drag a kid. Probably get five yards. Maybe looks like it's going to be second down and five. We're just about to two minutes. Still plenty of time. Plenty of time. We're in trips to the left. Trips to the left, one receiver to the right, no H back. We're going to send the running back in motion. We're going to pump it to him. Lawson's going to run the football. There comes a the flag. flag. They're going to back us up with a hold. So we score a touchdown, but I can see the referee saying holding. That was on our receiver on that side. They call that on Dockery over there. Or cheat him. Both, well, we not had three. Sure. We had three, didn't we? Yeah, I'm not sure who it was on, but no, I'm not sure who it is. Little score, Westland 21, picking seven. White County 14, Gilmer seven, halfway through the second. Rockmark's now up 28-0. And Lumpkin County is beating West Hall. Yeah, as of right now, we're, we've played Rockmark closer than anyone else. we got to remember, that's a 
That was a seven point game in the third quarter. Lawson's gonna roll, he's gonna look back, he's gonna throw the ball out of bounds. I'll tell you, sometimes that can be the best play a quarterback will make all night. Oh yeah. Is throwing the ball out of bounds. And, that, and that's hard for a competitor like Lawson because he always wants to make something happen. And uh, that's a that's a tough a tough decision for him, but he's he has absolutely gotten better all season with those decisions. I tell you, Brandon, it's not easy speaking of Lawson, who's had a great year, run the ball as hard as he does and then come back and put touch on a pass. It's it's tough. But he's he's improved every game, every week. He's gonna throw a better. little screen to Bourne. Bourne fakes a pitch to 55. Either he faked the pitch or was losing the ball. <laughs> he may have just mishandled the, the ball. Brings up a fourth down. Man, that holding call killed us. They've stopped two drives with holding calls tonight. So let's see. Where's it at, Brandon? On the 22. Yeah. Be about a 39 yard field goal in the cold weather. I see Coach Woodall off to himself. I assume he's talking to whoever is in his headset tonight, and they're making a decision. I see Boren looked a little shaken after that. I don't know if he took a took a shot to the midsection. He's kind of holding the, his ribs there, but he looks fine. But he, he took a he took may a have shot. took a shot. I, I think he I thought he was going to pitch it, but I think he may have fumbled or you know was juggling the ball a little bit. Turned, turned away from the uh, defenders and probably took a pretty good shot right there. Yeah, that's there. what I think. I think he, he took one right, right square in the chest. But, uh, yes, yeah, so he's still holding his chest a little bit. He's actually coming out for a play. So, so we're going to go here on fourth down. Offensive line's done a good job tonight. 115 and a half remaining. Had good pass protection. We're going to throw it. He's wide open. Nice catch. Nice run. Touchdown. Touchdown. Fanning. Nice throw and catch. Nice play design coming across the field on a crossing route. Braden Taylor, touchdown. Braden Taylor just ran over a defensive back there to score. <laughs> he did. He, he, he took somebody on down at the goal line, didn't he? He did. No move left or right, just straight ahead. So Ponton's going to stick it up and see if we can. This is just the way Emma drew it up. Score at the end of the half, take a 21-7 lead, and get the football to start the second half. Yeah, a minute, just over a minute. Uh, they don't, if we could just not give up a big play, they're not going to throw the ball deep. It doesn't appear. So just hang on for dear life here for uh, another minute. And, and take a take a two score lead to the half and um, do they have one timeout left or do they have two? Uh, I can't see. I would think they've got two. I don't remember them taking a timeout. Real quick, thank you to all my 183 concurrent viewers right now. Plus so we appreciate y'all turning in tuning in and then you've also got us on ETC 3 and ETC 14 is what I've been told. So Ponton's going to tee it up. Not sure what we're going to do here. We're going to onside. We're going to pooch kick it. We're going to kick it deep. And we're going to squib kick it. I didn't mention that one. Oh, they're oh. going to fumble the football. Holy cow. <laughs> they had, they I think had, I just had a heart attack. They had two Ooh. guys juggling the football, didn't they? They did. That almost didn't end well. No, that's the best kick we've had all night. That, that's put the ball down around the 20 yard line. And with a 59.1 second drive, I mean. Considering the way that the game has been played so far, I think that we can stop them before the half. Well, we need Braden Taylor needs back up. As we've said, don't let nobody behind you. They're going to roll, try to get somebody behind you. 
They're going to throw it out here in the flats. Conrad Head's going to come up and make a good tackle. Going to bring up a Reese second. comes in late. Like, like I said, you, oh, Moore and CJ, they're in on every play. They're going to go quick here. They're going to drop straight back, throw try to again. throw it deep. Going to throw it out in the flat again for a first down. Like you said, that's impressive. CJ's out there even with Conrad from the linebacker position. So, Is he saying first down Harrelson? I, I believe. I can't okay. swear to that. That's what it sounds like. They're going to roll to the right, number eight. We force him into throwing early. We're going to come up. Oh, we missed the tackle, but we're going to get him down. On the, for another first down on about the 43-yard line, 42-yard line. I'll be honest, Andy. I was afraid we were going to see some long. Well, they're going to mark it short, folks. That looked like that was dangerously close to a late hit. Uh, yeah, and that was dangerously close to an easy first down. So they're going to drop back and throw it. Number eight is going to throw deep. He's got a man up the sidelines. No flag on the play. We made a little bit of contact. I don't know if they called that a catchable ball or not. But we're pointing and asking questions. I think our two players are arguing with their sidelines. Let's get back in the ball game. Mr. Taylor, Mr. Dockery. So I cannot see the time. How much time we got, Brandon? 17.7 uh, seconds. They're going to run down. the football. Kid's going to get 8, 10, 12 yards. Still hadn't got him down. We got him down on Fannin's 38-yard line. Nine seconds. Nine seconds to go. I expect them to take a timeout here. Harrelson's got something moving. Got something going on. We're going to take a time out and talk about it. This was, uh, this has been an explosive A.J. Petrillo Remax Town and Country second quarter. I see Coach Turner getting a little fired up. He is fired up. We Don't. can't give up a touchdown, can't give up points here. Showing commercials on the Jumbotron. The only thing, the only problem I see a lot of times with the Jumbotron when we go out of town is it's always facing the home crowd and the visitors never get to see it. That's true. It's difficult to get one that's got a big range of view. So this brings up, they've got what, first down? On the 37 yard line. Rolling He's going to roll. He's going to throw it out in the flat. Kid's going to get out of bounds. 3.9 seconds. Looks like going to have time for one more play. He's going to have to take a shot in the end zone here. Be a good time for two deep safeties. We have Taylor and Sullivan, but I see Sullivan walking up. Sullivan's at the corner. We're still playing the three. Three. Uh, either going to try to kick it. Here. Wow. This would be a 46-yard field goal. He's going to stick it up. Uh, way short. Yeah, that may not. That barely made the end zone. So we go to halftime. Fannin 21, Harrelson 7. Stay tuned. The band is coming up right now. And we and get ball second half. And we get the ball the second half. Check. Check. 
Hello.
I just realized my sound was off. Uh, welcome back from halftime. We're starting the third quarter with Fannin 21, Harrelson 7. Uh, kickoff is just about to happen. I know y'all can see it, but if y'all are just tuning back in. We had a really good uh, first two quarters, and with the kickoff, we're taking it on about the 20. Let's talk about the 29. Well, we're back to fair catching that pooch kit. You jinxed us, ain't I it? did <laughs> jinx us, didn't I? But starting on the 30, you'd take that every time, the whole season. Oh, yeah. We're going to go empty backfield again. We've got the H back in the ball game. We're going to run a trap with him. Nice block. Pick up a good seven yards. We got a radio booth over here next to us, Brandon. I'm glad I got this headset on. Yeah. I don't know if they can hear it in our mics or not, but. I'm not sure it's, it's a weird place to not have a door. I agree. Um, that was one of the things we were discussing with um, the coaching staff earlier was which side we were each going to take. Lawson's going to swing a little pass out. We this guy over here gave us a loss of a half a yard. No gain on play. I'm not sure who that was to. Did y'all catch that? Was that a swing to Weaver? It was to Weaver. We're going to go... We're going to go now we're in trips. trips. Yeah, trips right, one split left. We're going to run the ball with Lawson. He's, He's gone. gone. Yes, sir. He's I gone. don't think they're catching him. I'm looking for flags. Nice run and touchdown. Touchdown. No flags. Emma called it. I sure did. Had a girl, Emma. It only That's took exactly me four what years. you were wanting, wasn't it? <laughs> it only took me four years. <laughs> called it perfect. So we can hang on. We can. You can get one more ball game. Well, I don't know how they let us. I don't know that we can do the uh, playoff game. I don't know. That's something we'll have to discuss with, of course, Mr. Gibbs and the athletic director down well, there. Well, there's something about the. Uh, uh oh, we're going to slap. That's. Oh, that's, that's a, a horse, horse collar. collar. Definitely a horse collar. And Coach Woodall's letting them know about it. Oh, yeah. Most definitely a horse collar. I don't understand how the white hat doesn't. Oh, he's motioning that he went straight down and didn't come back. No, he went backwards. Sure he did. Sure he did. So on the horse collar, Emma, that's when you grab the back of somebody's shirt okay. or shoulder pads. And supposedly... If you change their direction and pull them backwards, that's a penalty. But if you grab hold of it and go forward and don't change their motion and take them to the ground, it's not a penalty. Well, from, from this that's perspective. That's very subjective. It is. It's really subjective. Yeah, from, from this uh, viewpoint, there's not much doubt about which way our kicker went. He went backward. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree 100%. But that makes the score 27 to 7 early. In the third quarter. I mean, we're talking a minute and 20 seconds fast. In the Blue Ridge Orthodontics. Third quarter. All right, Pontine will tee it up. We've kicked four different kickoffs. This is a squib kick again. We had some success with it at the end of the half. Kid's going to take the ball up to the 40-yard line. And Harrelson County Rebels will scrimmage from the 40. Andy, late in the second quarter, Rock marks up 35 to zero on North Murray. Yeah, that ball game's over. So this is a bit of a, a learning game I've noticed. We've asked a lot of questions. What constitutes a late hit? Uh, if the whistle blows and somebody hits him late or if he's standing out of bounds, runs out of bounds and somebody hits him out of bounds, that's a late hit. So they're back in. Uh, Nice play. I think he lost a yard. Yeah. 
Let's see. They switched up referees on us. Brandon, guy that was on our side is now on the other side, this line judge. They do that every Friday night. Do they really? They sure do. I did not know that. <laughs> we're a lot closer down. Usually we're up high on the top of a press box, but we're right on the top of the visitor stands tonight. So probably getting yeah. a little bit more detail. Yeah, uh -oh. I know that from doing nice the Nice run on. there. That's holding by number 18. He had Dockery around both shoulders. Brings up a third and five. You're getting Harrelson in a position down 27-10 where it's four down territory all the time. The whole time, that's correct. Wesleyan's up on Pickens County at the half, 28-13. Lumpkin on West Hall, 28-7. And White is up 14-7 on Gilmer at the half. Guy's going to pick it through there, get a nice game. We're going to stop him a couple yards short. The thing we don't want to do, I understand that we're 20 points ahead, but we still have a whole half to play. The thing we don't want to do is get cocky for sure. No, uh -uh. you're exactly right. Because I know this is uh, whoever wins gets in, correct? I, it is. I'm not Win sure if or go home. Right, too, right. So. You know, this is going to be a very chippy game, but it hasn't seemed to be. What what you would think would be a chippy game, and it hasn't seemed to be so far. Oh, man, we had him in the backfield. He's may go. He may go. Docker gets him ankles. down on the ground on about the 23-yard line. We, uh, we got up to the line of scrimmage, Brandon, but we're not set and not ready. We weren't set. They snapped the ball a little quick on us and took advantage of it, and the kid, kid raced about 25 yards. So it is indefinitely in four-down territory here. I doubt we see any more field goals. They're going to hand the ball to number eight. He's going nowhere. Luke. Holson back, made the first hit, and then cleaned up again by C.J. Reese. Braden Taylor. Braden gets makes a lot of plays from the from the safety position up on the line of scrimmage. He comes downhill. There's yeah. no doubt, no doubt about that. So, who we got starting on the line? Brandon, we can see same people we had, right? We we are. You got uh, we got Baylor Twigs. You got Dozer Die, you got uh, Greens Green in there right now. Up, oh, they're going to break a one. Good tackle by Conrad Head, gets him on the ground. Going to bring up a third and short, very short. That's more yards than I thought. First down. Yeah, did you hear the announcer? <laughs> I did. Yeah. More yards than That's I thought. Good. That's more, more yards than I called. I think his mic was hot. I believe it was. Happens to the best of us. <laughs> Green in there on the line of scrimmage. Quarterback's going to keep it come this way. That a boy. Who was that? Die. Gets him on the ground. You know, they do something here in the stadium that I've never seen, and it's a blue light up in the top. Yeah, you know, we've got those lights uh, right there. We need to think about getting us a blue lens on it, don't we? Looks nice, doesn't it? It does. Looks nice. They're going to come up. It's going to be second and 11. They can get a first down inside the five. Three is going to take the ball. Get it down to about the 10 yard line. Taylor up on the tackle again. Along with CJ Reese, along with 77 Green. Big number 10 out of the ball game for Harrelson. Yeah, I, you know, I'd get him the football. He's a pretty good sized kid, isn't he? So they're going to come up the line real quick with nine seconds, eight. They're going to snap it, give it to number nine. He's going to get outside. We're going to get him down short of the first down. Who is that, four? 
14? I can't tell from here if it's four or 14. I think that's four again on the tackle. So it's gonna bring up a fourth and five. They can still get a first down on about the two. There's 10 back in the ball game. So this is, this is for Harrelson. They, of course, they wanna get a first down, but this is good either way. They could force us to go 95 yards. But we need a stop right here to keep them out of the end zone. Oh, he's gonna get the corner and score. score. We had it, we had it cut off on the inside and didn't contain on the corner and he got around the end for a touchdown. So that missed extra point, bad snap on the extra point may come back to haunt us. They're back in the ball game. 27-13, their kicker will put it down. Kick is up and it's good and midway through the Blue Ridge Orthodontics third down or third quarter. Um, our premier sponsors this year are Kevin Painter Insurance and Piedmont Bank. And our sponsors for the year are Mercier Orchards, Woodman Live, Trust at MC, Brotherhood Oil, Empty Stocking Program, Kiwanis, the Blue Ridge, Remax Town and Country, Steve Tucker, ETC Security, Kevin Painter Insurance, Lowry Law, Piedmont Bank, Knight Community Bank, the Fannie County Development Authority, and the Trailer Drive-In. Once again, a big thank you to all of these people. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Emma. You know, we were talking about uh, if we get to make the playoffs and things don't look as good right now, it is 27-14. We've got a two-score lead and getting ready to take the football. The state had entered in with NFHS. Brandon as as a sole provider of playoffs whether it be basketball football baseball whatever it is but we are a member of the NFHS so I'm not sure if we get to nice play right there uh, who got the ball 52 that seems right yeah, yeah Holson back came up with a football they tried an onside kick Holson back, got a good bounce. John and took it took it to the ground. Andy, to your point on the NFHS, it seems like though, the, I, I can't remember last year for certain, but I, I believe the year before we were able to broadcast. Uh, I know one game, game were because I got 1,200 views on it. So I very vividly remember that one. Well, yeah. we, we were able to broadcast one year uh, because of David Ralston. He gave them a call and said, hey, we need to be able to broadcast. So they're going to give the ball to Judah Wood. He's got a good run still on his feet. He got a couple yards. Yeah, maybe one, no more than, more than that. We're gonna run Taylor in. No, nope, we're gonna bring him back out of the ball game. With 440 and counting down remaining in the third quarter. So we've got Braxton Cheatham to the high side of the field. You got Dockery on this side. You got your H back. We're gonna snap the ball to Lawson. Oh, bad snap. Bad snap, Lawson. but he's gonna take the ball. He's Breaking gonna get tackle. a nice gain of about six yards. He's gonna bring up a third down and four. Just made an athletic play there. He took he took a bad a bad snap and made something out of it and gave us about third and four, wouldn't you think, Andy? Yes, sir. You know, uh, Brandon, you were talking earlier about Carson Callahan and Lawson Sullivan. Both those kids very rarely have been tackled by the first man. It's it's uh, they they tend to break tackles in the open field and get yards. So we're going to go trips. We got Weaver, we got Taylor, we got, we're gonna have to get up on the line. We're gonna run the quarterback. He's gonna stick his head in there hard. I don't believe he got it. He's uh, gonna be short. I, it's gonna be close. Either way, we're gonna go. I say we mark it. That's where you get trouble. He was, he was closer to the line than that. They're gonna measure it. 
Yeah, you know, we had talked about this where the officials now are just spotting the ball on the marker. So if he makes it. First down. Gave him a first down. Yeah. In the, uh, real quick, I got another question for us tonight. Lay it on. In the famous words of my mother, yep. what are the sparkly things on their back? Uh, <laughs> you talking about down on the lower part of their back? Yes. Yeah, those are pads <laughs> to keep them from taking shots to it's the kid kidney. Kidney protector. Yeah. Lawson going to take the ball. He's going to give it to Judah Woods. They had a linebacker come up, number 33, and hit him in the hole. Gain of about one. Bring up a second down. Yeah, Andy, uh, early in the season, we had an officiating crew to tell us that spotting on the hash was, was going away because they had realized that they were giving away too many first downs, and it was it was having an impact on on a lot of football games. I and so they did that for one game, and then the other four games that we were at home, they spotted it on the hash. And the other crews acted like we had uh, two heads when we asked them about it, how they would be spotting it. But so we had one crew early, maybe maybe game two, that, that told us that, and no one else has done that. So run it, run it. What's the hold? He's got big yards. He's going to take it and get out of bounds. Yeah, I, there's a flag. Where was that flag? I'm, I still don't it's see. It's on the far sideline. Right past the. Uh, hold him. Or maybe the 30. Maybe it's defensive holding, but I doubt I'm it. I'm sure it will be. I doubt it. Yeah. 214 remaining in the third quarter. This guy's called holding several times. He's getting good at it. And it's always happens on our receivers and on a big play, so we'll just have to watch film tomorrow. And Chad and Woodall will let us know whether we were actually holding downfield or was it phantom holding. So it does bring up second down and a short three, so we did pick up some yards on the play. Yeah. Just, picked up, just, as a matter of fact, picked up eight. Yeah, just just – about 15 less than, than we, we should have there. Lawson, Lawson is uh, he doing, doing a great job of reading. Um, you know, uh, I've heard quarterback coaches talk about guys run that RPO. It's never wrong to run. We're going to throw the ball here. He's going to roll. He's got a guy deep. He gets the ball to Dockery out of bounds for a first down. Just pitch and catch right there. Dockery went out and sat down and. Um, Lawson hit him on the run. I think he was. I think he was looking deep to cheat him down the middle, but pressure from the outside forced him out of the pocket, and he hit the he hit his check down over here on the sideline. Nice throw and catch. Still a good job by the offensive line. They're going to start having to bring some heat. They're going to have to bring some linebackers. You know, Andy, a rules question that I'm still sometimes a little confused on is you saw the white hat there wind the clock. When he was clearly out of bounds, it's it's about it's about how he goes out of bounds anymore. That that rule has evolved, and and again, that's that subjective. They're gonna call Mr. Holding's gonna call motion on Fannin. So they're gonna move the ball back five yards, and we'll scrimmage first and fifteen. But I guess I guess with with Dockery on that catch, I suppose the defensive back made contact prior to him going out of bounds. And I guess that's the re I, I'm That's what I they claim. Confused. They claim if you stop your forward motion going out of bounds, the clock still runs. Now, I don't know if that's in high school. I know that's the way it is in college or in the NFL. Now, college just changed it. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter he, he, until the last two minutes. Yeah, it, it appeared right there that he was he was – out of bounds. Before. He's going to give the ball on the speed sweep. He's got some good yards. The guy's going to sling him down. Looks like we'll be about second and eight. Second yeah. And nine. Got a good six yards With on the carry. only 50 seconds and counting down remaining in this quarter. So we may only get another play or two in. And that's what we want, Emma. We want that clock to run, run, run. Scores 27 14. Was it the, the muddle, muddle? Yeah. yeah, well, we, we come out a little quicker here. We're trying to. We'll try to slow it down in the in the fourth quarter. We're going to give it again. He's going to throw the football. He's wide open. Weaver's going to take the ball on the five. Weaver's He's going to score. Down. Nice play. Nice throw and catch. Who threw that? Braden Taylor, I think. 
I think he gave the ball to Taylor. We're going to go for two. We're going to try to make up for the missed extra point. Scores 33-14. I probably kick it here, but we're going to we're going to chase that missed extra point off the bad snap and see if we can't make it up. Try to make it 35-14. Yeah, that ball was, uh, he threw that ball, there was no air, there was no touch, it was directly, no, that, that Weaver was going to catch it or wear it. No, that, yeah, that was, that was a nice play, definitely you had, and we, you had their defense coming up, trying to stop us at the line of scrimmage, and we just ran right past them, good play call by Woodall. Just called the timeout, Andy. Yeah, we called it or they did? We did, I'm not sure, not sure about that. Uh, Emma, can you read pause. backwards and tell us how much time there is? 21.9 21 seconds. 21.9. Obviously, coaching staff feels this two-point conversion is important. Uh, important enough, they called a timeout. So in the Blue Ridge third quarter, Blue Ridge Orthodontics been a good quarter for us. 100%. And our premier sponsors... For this year, Kevin Penner Insurance, Mountain Valley Community Bank, no, excuse me, Piedmont Bank, I'm gonna keep doing that. Um, our sponsors for the year, Mercier Orchards, Woodman Live, Tri-State EMC, Brotherhood Oil, the Empty Stockholm Program, Kiwanis, the Blue Ridge, Remax Town and Country, Steve Tucker, ETC Security, Kevin Painter Insurance, Lowry Law, LLC, Piedmont Community Bank, Knight Community Bank, the Fannin County Development Authority, and the Trailer Drive-In. Once again, thank you so much to all of y'all. It's a good night for grandparents to stay in their house, get to watch the ball game on television on Friday night. Things have come a long ways in years, haven't they, Emma? Exactly, and with especially with this colder weather and it being so far away from home. We're going to put a man in motion. We're going to roll right, throw it back across the middle. He's wide open. We just threw it a little bit high. Just tried to hit Cooper Bourne across the middle. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the furthest game away that we play. It is. It is. As, as a matter of fact. Of course, other than playoffs, but I mean. Well, this first playoff game uh, is going to be down in Kennesaw area. Okay. Kennesaw, Marietta type area. But the score is 33-14, so we've gone back to a three-score lead. Brandon, which is big. It is big. They've got to hit some big plays uh, to get back in the ball game. And what we don't want to do, we don't want a big kickoff return by them, and we don't want to turn the football over. Yeah, just limit the big plays, and it'll it'll be fine. It'll be hard for them to, for them to score because I'm not sure they can stop us either. So I, th I think we most certainly are going to score um, again. Ponton's going to tee it up. Kick it deep. Yep, and he's going to kick it down. The up man's going to kick it, catch it number nine. He's got a hole. Number two's going to get him on the ground, though. No? Nope, I'm sorry. That's number eight. Is that eight or six? Hard to see. Those numbers get it's bunched up see. on these new jerseys. They've got elastic around the bottom of them. Those kids will bring them up there. So it's either Scotty Waltrip or Judah Wood. One of them made a tackle. Either way, both of them are good players. So Harrelson will come out. May be the last play of the third quarter in case they throw it. They're going to come up in the box set again. Wing spread. He's going to fumble the football, but he'll recover. That should take us to the fourth quarter. So we'll swap sides of the field. We got one more quarter to go to make the playoff score. Fannin County 33, Harrelson County 14. Here's you another score of interest. White County and Gilmer County are tied halfway through the third quarter. 
good ball game there. That's a good ball game. I don't, I don't know what playoff implications that have. I know Gilmer is in. I don't know if that's going to change their seeding with well, a win. I seem, I, it seems like it should. It should maybe bump them to a three seed over being a four seed. Here's what somebody told me that uh, if Gil, if White County wins. Uh, I think they're in, but if White County wins and Pickens wins, Pickens is in. I got you. Yeah, there, I, there is a way. Uh, there is a way for Pickens to be in. White County just went up 21-14 on Gilmer. Yeah, that was. We got those messages about five seconds apart, so it must have been a a quick score. Yes, uh, Greg Grease asked the question, if we win, we're in the playoffs, and that is correct. If we're in, uh, Greg, we're looking at playing uh, North Cobb Christian, which is down Kennesaw, Marietta way. So, uh, you know, I think I was talking to a lady, well, we're gonna go back to scrimmage in here. Quarterback's going to take the ball. He's going to roll right, throw it deep down oh, the middle. We may pick this one off. Oh, so close. Yeah, we almost tipped the ball and landed in number 10's hands. Is that number 10 finally threw him the ball? I believe it is. Almost tipped it. No. As we were saying earlier, That's number 17. 10 is yeah. a big old boy. Yeah, that was number 17. We almost intercepted and then almost tipped it. Reminded me of the Georgia Auburn game several years ago. Matter of fact, they look kind of like Auburn out there, don't they? They do. So it brings up third down and 15. You would think they'd be throwing here. They're going to roll right, got a guy in the flat. We're going to come up, miss the tackle. Miss the tackle and get a first down. I think he did get the first down. Let's see where they spot him. They're spotting him with a first down. He's run out of bounds, but not before he gets a first down. County. I'm not sure if he's saying Harrelson or not. I'm not real sure That's what, what he's saying. We were talking about earlier. We're not real sure. That gives them a first down on the 43-yard line. They're on 43. They come up to the line. They're going to run basically buck sweep with the quarterback. He's going to pick up a good seven yards. Now, they had a couple good drives. Williams on the carry. Brandon at the end of the first half uh, had two. One they scored on and one we held them short and they missed the field goal. They did. They, they uh, bounced it outside on us a couple of times. Uh, we're, we're committed to stopping that inside run and it's, and it's bitten us. But we're fine as long as we can keep them running three, four, five yards of play. Yeah, that's right. Keeps the clock moving. Keeps us with an opportunity. <coughs> 11 minutes to go. 10 just inside 11 minutes. They're going to spot yeah. the ball. They, now, these this, these guys are definitely spotting it, stop, spotting it on the high. Sorry are. about that. Sorry. Right. Yeah, you're talking about this this football game has been so run dominated that we're we're at a, here we are at 11 minutes left and we're an hour and 45 minutes into it we're not even two hours into this football game yet i guess he's saying harrelson's i like saying carrollton So we're coming out here. Oh, we just picked it off. Sullivan picked it off. Sullivan's going to the house. Sullivan with a pick six. What a huge play by Lawson Sullivan. 
I think we, we probably got lucky right there and got away with a block oh, we in the 100%. back. Oh, we 100%. We yeah, 100%. We, yeah, they, we got away with one right there. We got away with it. Big play by Lawson, for sure. That that might be the, the one we were looking for. Looks like we're going for two again right here. Sullivan's going to take it for two. Just ran it up the gut there. That's a good play. So we're up uh, 40 to 14. It's 40 to 14. We're up, up solid right here. A couple scores. Uh, Wesley ends up on Pickens 35 to 13, and Rockmart is up on North Murray 38 to zero, and Murray County is up on Gordon Central 28 to 14 in the third quarter. Now, I know you said Rock Mart was, of course, number one. And if we win this game, we're number four. That's correct. Who, do you say Murray was second? Uh, North Murray. North Murray was second. North Murray. And then Model will be three. Model will be three. So, you know, we, we're uh, we just a few points from us being the two seed here. Just a, just a, just, we just needed a couple of breaks, and we very easily could be the two seed in this region. But. But we're not. It looks like we're going to be the fourth seed, and we're going to get to play another week of football. And uh, we've, last few years, Fannie Kansas had some pretty good success winning first-round playoff games at home and on the road. That is true. So the expectation would be to, to do the same next next Friday night. And I think we definitely have that uh, ability. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, good kick. Good kick down to the 10-yard line. Uh, he brings it back out to about the 33 tackle there by Waldrop, number six. Defense is on the field, got nine minutes and nine seconds left, up 40 to 14, 41 to 14, excuse me. It was 41. I put 41 in, and then the scoreboard said 40, so I took it off, but I was right. Yes, you were right. Uh, number three on the carry, looks like he's going to pick up about six yards there. I think it was a problem with the two-point conversion there. It was. So going to be second about four. Little surprise, they're taking a little bit of time to get to the line of scrimmage. So here we are again, handoff, handoff to the edge, number 18. Gonna be short of the first down. It looks like it's gonna be about third and two. Uh, CJ Reese on the bottom of that pile again. He said he's only sophomore, correct? He is a sophomore, that is correct. You know, I think we've we've talked about it a couple times tonight. You look on the field, Brody Pascal is the only the only player we will not have back of the eleven that are on the field, and, right. and uh, which is always a good thing. You I'm know, sure when you is. when you have players who have got plenty of playing time in and they're starting the next year already sure seasoned. Is. Sure, it is. Looks like he's breaks push out edge. of bounds. About the 43, 44 by Tucker Dockery. <laughs> County. Gonna be first down. Got seven and a half minutes left in the ball game. There's that same question I had earlier. He goes out of bounds and the clock is still running. So that's one of those that I don't understand. Big pile up there in the middle. That's always something you got to be careful of, too. Yeah, it looks like we're rotating 
the defensive line out there, getting some guys a, a break. Yeah, and you mentioned getting chippy early, I and mean, that's something that we don't want to be a part of tonight. Uh, you, you've always got a concern gets chippy. Something, something goes south, we get someone ejected, and uh, that carries into the next game. We, that's certainly something we hope that hope this one, this one shouldn't get chippy. Um, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think. Not a big rivalry with Harrelson County in football. Not necessarily bad blood there, and that's usually what spills over uh, right i think what we see more and more is social media bleed into it where oh 100 percent yeah posts. and I can't, I can't imagine there's a lot of social media chatter between these two football teams great stop there on first down or second down and they uh, are so far we are so far away from one another yeah there, there's not going to be any mutual friends girlfriends anything of that sort they're not going to have any social interaction with these guys two and a half hours from home so so really probably Th that always keeps the the chippiness down it does it does. It helps. And like I said, not a not a huge rivalry game for us. Obviously, an important game. They're part of our region. We want to, certainly want to win it, but no no big rivalry with Harrelson County. Uh, to my knowledge, we've played them two times, and that would be uh, it in the history of the school. So uh, and it won't be playing them next year. It doesn't look like. Looks like they'll stay. They'll say two A. Two A. And uh, as we as we move on, as what appears to be going to single A. Looks like that's an incomplete pass. With 5.35 and counting down remaining in the fourth quarter of this game. It's, it's and like you were saying, right here. with this being such a, uh, a non-passing game, we this game has gone extremely quick. Uh, like you said, we're only not even two hours in, and that's including halftime. Yes, that's correct. Oh, deep ball, picked it off. Conrad Head with interception. Running down the sideline, pushed out about the 33 yard line. It is, got a, looks like a player down over in the corner. I believe it's a Harrelson County player, he's getting up. Not Limping sure. off a little bit. Yeah, maybe, maybe twisted his ankle, not sure what happened there. Big play by the sophomore, nice, nice job. Uh, got back up to about where where we uh, where we started. I know that's uh, if I on the fourth down, you, it's always easy, it's easy from here to say just knock it down. But uh, as as a young man, you're not going to do that. You're gonna you're gonna pick oh, the football not. off. That's that's just the way it is. So uh, you see guys in the NFL do the same. But hey, great play by Conrad. Right place, right time. Fought through it. Got an interception for us. That's a big play. Big play. Conrad's a wrestler, used to that contact there. He's not afraid to fight through that little shuffle pass there to, to Judah Wood. Gonna be gonna be stopped for no gain. You guys notice we're missing Andy, so I'm talking a little more. Andy went to Andy coordinates food uh, for the guys uh and ladies of the football team after the game andy does so much for the program no one no one really understands what andy does for the athletes he's just andy he's just andy <laughs> he, no, he doesn't I'm, have a title he's yeah, just that's andy right. that's right he is uh he, he serves in a lot of capacities does a lot of uh, gives a lot of time and uh um other stuff to our to all of our programs but he's He's really involved with football. So Andy, Andy coordinates the post-game meal, and he had to go meet those folks tonight. I guess he didn't have someone else. Hand off to Judah Wood. Uh, nice game. Looks like we'll be about third and eight. And uh, while we have a super quick second, uh, I want to say our cheerleaders are looking great out here tonight, our athletic trainers. So it, the band sounds amazing. We can't see him tonight, but we can hear him. So it isn't just the football players. It isn't just us. It really is a community of people that makes everything run so smoothly. Yeah, it looks like we're muddle huddling now, Emma, with two Two minutes and 45 seconds. We're not in any hurry. I, I don't blame us one bit. I would be ready to get out of here, too. Yeah, I think Coach Cheatham, Coach Wood, all the, the least number of plays they have to run, the less chance of, of any. Oh, got a pass to down the field, overthrows him just a little bit. He was open, overthrew him just a little bit. To Braxton Cheatham. That was to Cheatham. So, yeah, we, we certainly are trying to. We want to run the minimum number of plays right right here, get out with the wind, get back to Blue Ridge, everyone's safe. Uh, get ready for that long ride home. 
Yes. Clock's continuing to run. We're on a we're on a running clock. I I certainly didn't think we had uh, passed the running clock. We but did not. We hit, we obviously, um, it's running. So I guess I don't understand that rule or know what it is. Fourth down. Looks like Lawson's going to. I thought run. an incomplete pass stopped it. It, it does, but it, it's probably it, we're on a running clock. It appears so. Must be something to do. Good punt, but Lawson going to roll out about the 27 yard line there. And the clock continues to run. So so maybe maybe due to the score, even though it wasn't at the beginning of the fourth? Well, yeah, no, it's still it, not. Yeah, a, we're not 30. So I'm not sure what the, what the, what the is uh, there. Middle of the fourth quarter, White is up on Gilmer, 21 to 20 score there we're the clock's now stopped at a, at a minute 25 so i'm not sure what the clock's doing it continued to run well after the ball rolled out of bounds so i'm not i'm not sure what's going that on that may be clock. an error on the clock what, what do they call those the, the uh, eco yes the electronic clock operator so we'll shuffle pass oh looks like we're gonna throw back half back pass that's a backward pass oh they blew it dead that was really close to being a backward pass there. It was. Live ball. That was a couple more degrees to the left right there. That's right. And the clock is back running. We're a minute and six seconds from this one being in the books. Uh, it's exactly two hours in minus halftime. So this was about an hour and a half game. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a very quick football game. And with that drive, it's a good night for that. Oh, I agree. No that's, one will be complaining. That's what I was worried about when I was talking to my mom. And she was like, you're going to be getting in so late. I was like, well, as late as I got in with the other game and us starting at 7, I knew it would be. Yeah. Yeah, good tackle up front there. Looks like uh, Bourne again. And uh, Isaac Watkins in on the tackle. Young freshman we've asked a lot of this year. He's responded well. So we're inside 30 more seconds. Years. Well, three more years yeah, now. Three more but years, <laughs> that's right. So you're talking about young guys that get a lot of snaps. He he's only going to get better as he gets oh, yeah. in the weight program and bigger and stronger. Um, so again, CJ Reese sit on that tackle. Looks like that's going to do it. Possibly about 16 seconds left. So. of course for coming with me tonight and helping me out um, of course Andy and you thank you so much for coming um, I appreciate everything y'all have done and I hope y'all have safe travels back home thank you